Hello to all, welcome to the channel Cloud Knowledge. Today in this video, we'll study about the simple movement of data from a table from on-premise SQL Server to ADLS Gen2 account in Azure using Azure Data Factory copy activity. And for this process, we know the integration runtime couldn't be the auto-resolving. It has to be self-hosted integration runtime. Through that SHIR, which is self-hosted integration runtime, will be moving the data from on-premise to Azure cloud storage, that is the blob storage. Okay, so let me first show you here in the SQL Server Management Studio, we have the SQL Server, localhost, you can see the name is localhost, MS SQL Server 02, <coughs> sorry, where we have the database, master, inside this master, we have a table called dbo dot test which has two rows two columns and in the server we have the security section where we have created a separate login which is ck user through which we are going to log into this sql server okay so <coughs> we will connect to this on-premise sql server database and to this table and transfer this test table data to blob storage in Azure. So now let's go to the Azure portal to the data pipelines in the data factory and we'll create a new pipeline. So here I'm clicking on creation of a new pipeline. We'll say copy SQL to blob the name of the pipeline we have given. Now we'll take from the move and transform tab the copy activity in the canvas so just drag and drop here the general section we leave it as is we'll go to the source section in the source section we have to create the source data set so we'll click on new here we have to search for sql server so since it is on-premise sql server so we'll select sql server we'll click on continue sql server table the table name is test on premise next is link service if it, does, if it does not exist you have to create one if it exists use it so we'll create a fresh one to demonstrate how we have to connect to that sql server so sql server let's write it as on premise then the integration runtime the integration runtime has to be shir which is already there in place so we'll select self-hosted integration runtime about the creation of shir I'll create a separate video. Now next is server name. Our server name is here, which is localhost MS SQL Server 02. So we'll write it as localhost backslash MS SQL Server 02. Make sure you write it correct. Then the database name. The database in users master authentication SQL authentication. And the user, I've already told you from the login section, we are using the user CK user. So the name of the user is CK user. Give the password for the user. We'll go a little down. Encryption, since it is just for demo purpose, we'll write it as optional. And we'll click on test connection. <coughs> connection successful means we have connected to our SQL Server and SQL Server on-premise using the self-hosted integration runtime and the SQL authentication. Now we'll click on create. <coughs> so it's successfully created. We can see here link service SQL Server on-premise. So we have a small typo here, ON, it is PN. Let's leave it. Now here we can see we are connected to that database and all the tables are displaying under the table name section. Okay, and we have to connect to the dbo.test. So we'll select dbo.test and we'll click on OK. So here now in the source, we can see the source data set is selected. Use query is of table type. Rest of the settings will leave it as is will go now to the sync. In the sync, we have to create a sync data set to the blob storage. 
So if we go to another page in the browser, here we have a storage account named as Cloud Knowledge. Inside this Cloud Knowledge storage account, we have several containers. We'll consider this output container where we want to land this file or the table data from the test table. So we'll go now again back to the pipeline. We'll create a new sync data set. Now here in the new data set, we'll select Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account. The type of file should be delimited text. Let the name be as is. We'll create the length service or if it is already there in place, just select it. So we have it as Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. We'll select it. After selecting the link service, we'll browse to the file path where we want to land the file. So we can see the different containers present inside that storage into account. We'll select output. We'll click OK. And OK again. OK. Now we'll open this sync data set. We want to name the file something, right? If we do not give the name, it will take the default name as a table name. We want it to be named as test.csv. OK. We'll go back to the pipeline, to the mapping section, settings, and user properties. We'll leave it as is. We'll validate our pipeline. It's validated. We'll publish the changes to the data factory. Publishing is in progress. It completed. Now we are going to run this pipeline. So we'll perform a debug run. Click on the debug. You can see the copy data activity is queued. It's in progress. Let's wait for its completion. So we can see after one minute, 44 seconds, this activity finished. We'll go to the output folder here in the storage center account container. We'll click on refresh. And we could see here that test.csv file is created. We'll click on it. We'll try to click on the edit section and we could see the data landed from our on-premise SQL Server. ID, name, and two rows, right? So this is how using Azure Data Factory, copy data activity, and the SHIR, that is the self-hosted integration runtime that we can connect to the on-premise SQL Server, transfer the data from that table to here in our storage account. Hope you've understood this video. Do let me know in the comments if you have any queries. Thank you for watching the video. Happy learning!